Hi everyone! Welcome to another Ashtown Creations tutorial. My name is Stephanie and I had the privilege of being a tester for the very first bag pattern from a new pair of bag designers. This beauty is the Windsor Bag by Kim and Kayla from Harrow Lane. Isn't it a gorgeous design? It's a large bag. Some of the testers have shown it as a diaper bag, commuter bag, overnight bag, and depending on the allowable dimensions, it might fit as a carry-on bag for travel. It has two shorter handles that you carry by hand or in the crook of your arm. I would have to make the handles longer if I wanted to carry it on my shoulder. It's a little tight. It has an adjustable crossbody strap and two decorative castle straps on either side of the bag. The pattern comes with instructions for a tassel. I will be doing a video for that at a later date. It has an exterior slip pocket. This definitely could be repeated on the other, uh, other side if desired. It comes with a zippered closure and the way the zipper is done allows for the bag to open up very wide. Inside there is a slip pocket and a zipper pocket on the other side and lots of space for lots of different items. This bag is rated as an intermediate and I would agree with that. The hardest part of this bag are these side panels. They are a tricky shape to sew, but if you follow the instructions and take your time, they are doable and so worth it. One more thing, the PDF pattern pieces are taped together um, different than what I usually see in bag making patterns. The method used is what I would see in clothing patterns. So before I go through the pieces for this bag, I have included a little footage of how to put the pages together. If you already know how to work with this style of pattern piece, feel free to use the timestamps to skip this section. I will add links to the pattern and all of the materials in the description box below. I will also list the timestamps so you can jump to the section that you need. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and select the notification bell to be notified when new content is available. Please leave any questions or comments in the comment section below. I will do my best to respond as soon as I possibly can. And I would like to say thank you to Kim and Kayla from Harrow Lane for accepting me to be a tester and allowing me to record this tutorial for you. Okay, let's get sewing. Since the printing and piecing of these pattern pieces for this pattern, this bag pattern, is different than what we're used to seeing for most bag patterns, this is mostly what I've seen for clothing patterns, um, the way you put the, the pattern together and then cut it out, I thought I would do a little video showing how I go about doing it. There is a print guide in the pattern that shows you what pages all of the pieces are on. Um, they have included the rectangle pieces. Um, the first 12 pages are the different, the ones with different cutout shapes and stuff and rounded ones. And then pages 13 through 25, I believe, are the rectangle pieces. So you can go ahead and just print out the ones you want. In this, there's a couple different ways of doing it. You can you need to overlap some pieces. So you want to make sure that your your pattern pieces have printed out. Um, you want to make sure you've printed out at 100% or actual size. And you also want to make sure with your printer that you print out an auto orientation. And I will insert a screenshot of my um, printer dialog box. So when you're printing out, you want to print the pattern pieces just one-sided, actual size or 100%, and use auto orientation. And that should give you the right size pattern pieces. And it will also, in this pattern, if you can see it, give you an outline box. And we're going to use these outline, the lighter outline pieces, or lines, to match up our pattern pieces. So I've gone ahead and what I've done for the first row, this is, so the first row for this pattern is pages one through four. Yes, one through four. And I have taken off the left hand side. So you can see this piece no longer has this line. It's got the top line, the side and the bottom, but it no longer has the left side. So I cut off the left side so I can take it and butt it up right against the line, the right hand side line of the previous page. 
I match up these lines, the green line and the light, um, these light edge lines. And then I tape and I make sure that I tape within the pattern piece because there's no point in taping out here and you cut it and the rest of it falls apart. I actually tape in a couple different spots. So on the first row, I didn't cut off the top because it doesn't really matter. But for the second row, and the second row is going to start with page five. So this is page five. We'll go down right here at the bottom. And this side, I'm not gonna cut the left because it's at the edge. There's no point in cutting that off. I'm just gonna cut off the top of this piece. So on page five, I am going to cut off the top so that I can meet this line with the bottom line of page one. And I have an old rotary cutter and a ruler that I, and one of my regular rulers. And I will line up the ruler along the line and use my old rotary cutter. I don't, you don't want to use your good one that you're going to be cutting your fabric with. Use an older one and we're going to just take the top off of that piece. Set that all aside. And now I'm going to take this piece and line up this corner here and I'm going to line up the edge and the stitch or in um, interfacing line. So take some tape and put it, make sure that it matches up pretty well. Take some tape and put that down. Tape that down. Now for page six, six, seven, and eight, move this up a bit. I will take page six and now I'm going to cut off the left side and the top side. So I'm just going to pick the top to start with. Oops, didn't completely cut through. There we go. And now I'm going to do the left hand side. Looks a little weird. I have it upside down, but I'm right handed. So, and I pick this side because I find it easier to put the left one down and then the right one, the next one beside it on top of it. You can cut off the bottom and the right if you want, doesn't really matter as long as you keep it consistent throughout all of your pattern pieces or all of the pages for the pattern pieces. So now I'm going to take this one and match it up so that the lines, the outlines match and the lines for the pattern pieces match. And as you go on, it gets a little tricky if you haven't matched the top row correctly, it can throw out the next rows. So there, I'm going to do the corner. And again, I'm taping within the pattern piece. And then one here. Yeah, so one we'll do, so that's six, seven, eight, all the way to 12. And basically you can stop then and start again on 13 to 25 if you want just the straight rectangle pieces. But that is how you go through. Just do it again the same and then start in the next row. Do it the same, move down again. And then once you have those all ready, you can cut them out. Once I've cut my pieces out, I will flip them over. And you see these are all loose in here. So then I will take tape and I will tape within the pattern piece. I usually cut them out before I tape the back, but you wanna make sure you tape both front and back. So yeah, some people do these, you hold it up like on a, a window and you start taping in the window and just overlap. You don't have to cut anything off. Um, but this is the way I do these pattern pieces. And uh, as long as you're, you're even with your cutting and try very hard to get the lines even, you will have all your pattern pieces stuck together and they're full pattern pieces this way. All right, let's go through the pieces for this Windsor bag. So the exterior I'm doing all in faux leather and I've chosen a Mora faux leather that I got from Emmeline Bags. These are the two exterior panels and I have already interfaced them with Decaville light. Continuing on with the, the faux leather pieces, this is the base. Again, it's interfaced with a Decaville light. 
the handles I've got two handles they're already interfaced with the uh, Decaville light and I've marked the the line down the center and put sticky tape on either side of the uh, center line for the uh, these are the bottom anchors. So the straps start at the bottom, have a little rectangle ring or yeah, rectangle ring. Um, and then there's a mid strap and then the handles. So these are the bottom anchors and I have four of them and I've already interfaced them with Decaville light and put my line down the center with the sticky tape. All of my handles, crossbody straps, I've already prepped them like that. So, and there's the main straps um, and I have four of them. I have one crossbody strap and I have not interfaced this. I don't usually find I need to interface but I have um, already marked the line down the center and put the sticky tape on for the crossbody strap. And these are the crossbody anchors. So I looks like I cut four. I only need to cut two. So I've got two extra just in case. So crossbody strap anchors already prepped to go. We have the side panels, two side panels, and they're interfaced with Decaville light. I have one exterior slip pocket um, interfaced with a Decaville light. Have um, the zipper overlay. Uh, the ex interior slip pocket trim. I have two tassel straps. They're not interfaced or anything. They're just as is. And I also have one piece. This will be for the tassel and I'll probably do a separate video for the tassel. I have actually adhered some um, heat transfer vinyl to the back so that you don't see all the white backing when we cut out the tassel. So we'll see how this goes. First time attempting this. So um, I will do that later. I also, out of the vinyl, have four um, tassel connectors. So they're a little different shape, easily lost, but I've got uh, the, the tip interfaced with Decaville light. So these will fold over. The D-ring, half inch D-ring will go right there and they will attach to the bag. For the lining of the bag, I have chosen to use this beautiful Rifle and Paper Company um, print. It's on a canvas, so I have not actually interfaced. We'll see how it goes, and I can try and let you know at the end to see if I should have interfaced it or not. I don't normally interface like waterproof canvas, and it's hit or miss whether I actually interface canvas or not. So we're going to give it a go and see how it goes. I have a... Also with the uh, lining fabric, I have the, what is this, interior slip pocket. And the, we will have the um, faux leather trim go along the top of the slip pocket. I have, this is the exterior slip pocket lining. And I have the interior zipper pocket. So all done in that beautiful Rifle Paper Company and Paper Company fabric. That's it for the fabric pieces. Moving on to the hardware, I have zipper. This is um, matte black. So all the hardware with the exception of the uh, half inch um, swivel hook for the tassel um, is all done in matte black. So this is like a beige um, tape with matte black teeth. So this is the exterior top zipper. And this is the interior's zipper pocket. So exterior, this is the outside zipper, inside zipper pocket. And I have these beautiful rose zipper sliders to go with it. They're matte black. I have two of them, one for each inside and out. Um, so for the outside of the, the, for the straps on the bag, there's Two, there's two sections before you get to the handle. So the bottom section, the bottom anchor, I'm going to be using these matte black rectangle rings. I have four of them. And for the top part of the, st the strap that connects to the handles, I have these 
figure eight um, strap connector. So I will be using, I have four of those, so I'll be using those for the top. To attach on the side, we have um, one inch D-rings to attach the crossbody strap to. And I have two one inch swivel hooks that will go on either end of the crossbody strap. As I mentioned, I have one, this is gunmetal for the tassel. For the tassel straps on the side, I have four little half inch D-rings. So I have four of them. For the zipper tape, I have one zipper end. It's a pretty large chunky one. And for all of the fabrics and uh, hardware, I will mark down in the description box below where I've got my fabric, hardware, everything from. So, and then for the crossbody strap, I have one crossbody, one uh, slider. I also have six of these one inch strap um, ends. I have my bag feet and I also have my Ashdown Creations cork label that I will be applying. So that looks like it's all for the, for the hardware. So let's get sewing this bag. Okay, it's time to prep our crossbody anchors, the bottom anchors, the main straps, all the little pieces we need to make the crossbody strap and the um, handles. So I'm going to start, I had forgotten to mark, these are the tassel straps, I had forgotten to mark a line down the center. So I have now marked a line down the center and I have put on a piece of um, double sided tape. This is the quarter inch wide. Um, most of them I have two pieces of tape, one on either side. These I figured were small enough, I could just get away with the quarter inch tape. So I'm going to, for all of my pieces, go through and start folding, take the tape off, fold it both sides into the center and prepare them to sew on the machine. So I'll fast forward through most of this because it's pretty repetitive, but I'm gonna start with, these are the tassel straps, so I'll start with those. And I generally will start in the center, especially this Morpho leather is a little stretchy. So you wanna make sure that you don't stretch it because um, it will make your straps go all wonky and wavy. So start in the center, move out to the edge, pressing it down and then repeat for the other side. And now these are the crossbody anchors. Again, start from the center. And the deck of a light should give you a nice crisp edge once everything's folded over. And fold it over just up to the line. If you've got everything centered, it gives you a nice smooth edge. Now we're on to the bottom anchors. These are the main bag straps. And now we're moving on to the bag handles. So 
So for now, we'll leave it like this. We'll fold it in half when we go to stitch it. There are the two handles. And now the one long crossbody strap. Right, there we go we have all of them um, stuck together I will I will turn change the camera angle now and we will stitch these up all right since I have an almost full bobbin I'm going to start with the uh, crossbody strap the handles and the tassel straps um, the these ones get sewn with a uh, an eighth of an inch seam allowance right along the edge as you can see I've clipped my uh, my crossbody strap some people are able to just hold it in place. I like to have clips. You can also, as the instructions suggest, put double-sided tape down so you hold them together. My machine doesn't really like a lot of double-sided tape, so I thought I would just, um, just try and clip it. Anyway, so I've put my machine on a five-stitch length, and I'm going to stitch across, at, across the end, and then I'm going to stitch down the open side. I want to close up the open side, try and keep these as even as possible, and then I'll come back up the, the closed side because that will just keep things all nice and even. So across the end, down the open side, across the bottom, and back up the other side. And as I mentioned, a five stitch length. After stitching the um, crossbody strap, the one side, the open side, I didn't have a problem on, but I had quite a bit of problems. I had to start and stop a couple times and rip the stitches out on the closed side because this is where the center line is and we stuck sticky tape on both sides of the center line. And as I think I mentioned before, my machine does not like um, double-sided tape. So what I've done, I've completed one of the handles just to make sure. I put, I took it apart and I stuck sticky tape down the center of the part that gets folded over. So it will still stick down, it's just not in the center where I'm going to stitch. So this way I've kept it out of the ends and I've kept it away from the seams because I'm going to stitch eighth of an inch on this side, like so this gets folded in, so it'll be eighth of an inch on this side and then eighth of an inch on this side and we're avoiding the sticky tape. So I'm just gonna go ahead, remove the um, tape from this piece, stick it together like I did before, and then I will stitch around this handle and then I will move on to the tassel straps. I'm hoping that this was a quarter inch. I'm hoping I avoid the, the tape on this one, but if I didn't, if I, like if I can't, if it's too wide, I may have to do something similar with those. All right, there we go. So make sure when you're adhering your Decaville light to the edge of the handles that you don't um, over get it over the edge too much, like this edge here, because that will get an interfere with um, 
with the folding when you go to fold. So yeah, make sure you cut it appropriately. And if it does overhang a bit after you've fused it, trim it off. Otherwise it will make it difficult to fold it properly. All right, so I'm going to stitch this just like I've done the other ones across, down the open side first, across the bottom, back up the top. And then we have the handles. So I'm just going to go across and cut, trim off the ends so that they're nice and even. We are putting um, uh, strap ends on these, but it's good to have them even. Before putting the strap ends on them. All right, so there's the strap. The uh, crossbody strap will add the hardware in a little bit. So you can, as you can see, this strap is twisting where the strap isn't. Part of it is because I, when I fused the Decaville light, it was overhanging. It was um, off in some bits. So I had to pull to get this edge even. It will be fine when when it's hooked onto the bag, but when I had to pull this to get. Well, I pulled it to get this even, and by pulling it, it stretches it and it makes it go all wonky. As I mentioned, it'll be fine once it's on the bag, but it does twisting it, pulling it will make it twist. So these ones are all three eighths. So I am going to chain stitch them all. The other thing that gums up my needle is Decaville Light. So cleaning that off, see it jumps, stitches there, and everything's really tight at the back. So I'm gonna clean this up off camera, finish stitching this. So the rest looks, mm, if you can see, it's got very tight tension at the back and very loose on the top. So I'll go fix up these, the tension issues and then um, come back and stitch the other side. All right, so when I opened up the um, other straps to fix them, I realized that it's not the Decaville light that I have a problem with. It's I've put sticky tape down either side of the center and I was stitching through the double-sided tape and my machine doesn't like double-sided tape, so um, that was a problem. So what I've done is so on the ones that I opened up both sides, I've uh, taken the tape off of both sides. Um, the one I couldn't get all the tape off of, I've put a little bit of, I have machine oil and I put a drop of machine oil, well cleaned off with uh, rubbing alcohol, cleaned off the, the sticky goo from my needle and then put a drop of um, machine oil on it. Now that works for faux leather, but I don't think it would, you'd probably leave an oil mark on um, fabric regular fabric. So to get through the sticky stuff, I put a drop on and uh, the, the side that I was able to get the sticky tape off of, I just went ahead and I've um, clipped them together. And I will go ahead now and stitch down the other side. So I've done two of the long ones. So I'll continue on with the rest of them now. So just be aware of what your machine can handle and what it can't. And, and when you go to 
you know, follow instructions. If if putting double sided tape on either side of the um, marked line, center line doesn't work for your machine, then find a way that does. You don't have to absolutely follow every instruction in a pattern. They're guidelines. So in my case, I shouldn't have. I should have known that I was going to end up stitching it because um, I, I should know better. But uh, I did and I had to rip it out. And now I'm continuing. I'm just going to clean up some of the ends with using bonded, I'm using bonded nylon so I can, bonded poly bonded nylon, you can use a lighter to melt the ends if you didn't know that already. So in my industrial machines I like using bonded poly, bonded poly or bonded nylon so I can do this. Now it's time to add the tassel strap connectors to the main bag exterior. So we need our odd, the really odd shaped tassel um, strap connectors, our half inch D-ring, and instead of using tape, I'm going to be using the Beacon 3-in-1 glue. Um, Beacon Fabri-Tac is fine. I don't notice much of a difference between the 3-in-1 and the Fabri-Tac, so this is what I have available. This is what I'm going to use. So. Um, so this is instead of the tape. So I'm going to, on the back, I'm going to put my D-ring, my half inch D-ring on the connector. Move my main panel. So I'll do that for all of them. So that they're all on. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my three-in-one glue and apply it to the tip. Just want enough so that it stays down when I put it down. Putting it on the very, like the end of it. So now I'm gonna take the piece with the glue and fold it back, the tab back, towards the wider part. And I wanna make sure that I have an about, so you can see these, so I want it to fold back to where it starts to widen out. And I'll press it into place and I'll do this for all four pieces. I'm trying to keep the tab into the center of the uh, of the tassel connector piece. And I also want to make sure that I get it just to the widest part. I don't want it too far down or it will sit funny. And then the last one. So I put, push it down and then I pull up a little bit on the D-ring. And now we're going to center it on the panel. So grab a panel and we're gonna measure in from the edge of the tab. Well, we'll put the ruler down along the edge of the tab and we'll measure in the, the amount suggested. Okay, so we're gonna According to the dimensions in, or the measurements in the pattern, we're going to measure over and down. And actually, I'm going to put a little bit of glue on this to hold it into place while I, and I'm putting it away from the seam. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue in the center here to kind of hold it. while I position it on here. And I want the center, I haven't marked the center, so I, this one I'm gonna eyeball it a bit. And I want to place it this way so that the D-rings are pointing out. And I'll place it what it suggests away from the edge and how far down it suggests. 
So uh, using the, the measurements in the pattern, I've got it measured down and in where it's supposed to go. I am putting a little bit of pressure on this to hold it into place. And then I will do this for all four sides. All right, we're gonna go, we'll eventually go and stitch these, but for now I'm going to mark a spot up from the bottom and centered in the, centered in the connector, because we are gonna end up installing a rivet. So according to the measurements in the pattern, I'm going to mark, where is the center? Gonna mark right about the center and put a dot. And I'll do that for both panels. And then we'll stitch it on. Go and stitch it an eighth of an inch around the edge. And then I'll up apply the rivet. All right, so we want to stitch around these connectors with an eighth of an inch uh, seam allowance. We're going to leave our tails long so we can pull them through to the back side and tie off well. I'm going to start off as close as I can to the D-ring. And I still have it on a five stitch length because it's top stitching. And like I said, I'm not going to back stitch, so I'm just going to go all the way over to the edge. And then come down the side and hopefully and these connectors weren't too large. So I was able to, um, was able to come down off of it pretty easily. So I'm just going to go around and I'm going to do exactly the same thing for all four and then we will continue on to the rivets. I'm gonna take it nice and slow around these corners, basically one at a time, one stitch at a time. And now, I know we said we're gonna take, leave our tails long and not back stitch, but I prefer to have extra stitches over these even though it's not going to be what's carrying the bag i prefer to have a one at least one extra row of stitching along i'll just go over this line again so and now i'm going to needle up pull it out cut my tails long flip it over pull up on the thread and wiggle it it should bring a loop to the back if it doesn't and you need to help it a bit grab you can grab on on either side of the loop and just pull it'll actually help pop it through and do the same for the other side this one's a little easier because we haven't stitched over it and then I'm just going to tie three knots in it snip it off and then I'm going to I'll do the same for the other one after and then I'm going to just melt them down and press them this helps keep it in in place and we don't show the extra the tie outside all right I will go ahead and do the same for all four connectors and then we'll move on
and there we go all of the connectors are in now sometimes like with this one i wasn't able to get the front one through because i had stitched through it so i just snip off the front tug on the back one a little bit to make sure it's all popped to the back and then i'll tie them all together like that it's a, so you can do it either way like that or like that but there we go so now wipe off all of the extra marks so now we want to where we've put these marks in i'll just make this one a little darker i'm going to punch a hole in each of them so i'll bring over my rivet press and uh, i have a rivet press for holes and a rivet press for rivets so i will bring it over get it all set up and then we'll punch the holes and i will add the rivets so the two so i'm using a two millimeter um hole punch to punch my holes and so i'll just go ahead i'll line up the center of the mark that i made in the center of the connector and punch and there we go i'll take the the rivet these are double cap rivets so both sides have caps i prefer i'm using smalls because there's it's not overly thick here so i'm going to push it through the hole okay i'm gonna try it again see if i didn't i know i got it all the way through but maybe it just needs a little bit of a little bit more room try that again all right so push it through i prefer to push the post through the front but it does i don't think it really matters i just like doing it that way take the cap this already has decaville on it so and i i popped it on so this already has decaville so i'm not going to add an extra if i didn't have the decaville light on the back i would take some either decaville heavy or something else and put an extra piece on there so that it that it won't pull through this isn't uh this isn't a weight bearing uh connector or and the rivet's not going to take any weight on it it's just a little decorative strap so i don't really need to reinforce it that much if it was a weight bearing strap then i would be probably reinforcing it a little bit more anyways i'm going to continue doing that for all four connectors and then we will press the rivets in place Wow, usually two millimeter is fine. I'm just gonna grab my three millimeter ball punch, three millimeter punch and um, see if that one works a little bit better. Or die for it. So I keep all of my dies for my hole punches in here. So now I need to find the Here's my three millimeter. So it's a little bit larger hole. So I'm gonna put that in, take off the top part. And swap out for the other hole punch. And see if this works any better. Creating the holes. All right, try the three millimeter hole punch. There we go. Put that in there. That's a little bit better. And pop the cap on the back. There we've got all of the posts, the rivets in. Now I'm going to swap out my rivet presses. So this is the one I have with the uh, press to actually seat the rivet. So I'm going to take take the uh, rivet I'm going to set it down so that it sits seats right nicely in the um, cupped part and press and there we go do it for all four and there we go we have all of the rivets and the connectors done it's time to put this aside for a bit and move on to the next step Now it's time to move on to the exterior slip pocket. So I've got my exterior pocket piece that's been interfaced with Decaville light. And then I've got my um, exterior pocket, slip pocket lining piece. And you can see here that it is shorter, that is correct. So I'm, I'm matching these up 
right sides together. I haven't interfaced the pocket. I'm it's canvas. I'm not sure if I really need to. I'll find out after if I was supposed to or not. So anyways, we're going now that we've got them faced together, we're going to sew across um, with the required seam allowance across the top. And I'm going to put mine fabric side down so that the feed dogs can grab pull it through since it's a little more stretchy than the um, faux leather. And I'm going to put it on a three and a half stitch length, which is what I use for a joining stitch. If you like a shorter stitch length, that's up to you. But I'm using the what I usually use, which is three and a half to join and a five for top stitching in case I forget to say before. So now stitch across back stitching at the start and the end of the seam. And uh, yeah. All right, take it out, trim off the tails. And now we're going to match up the bottom edge and clip. Fold the seam at the top. Okay, so I'm gonna match up this at the bottom edge first. And I'm clipping it along. Okay, so I'm gonna so clip the bottom. I'm turning this so that it's folded over down on itself like this. So this is everything. This is the faux leather and the fabric folded down. I'm gonna actually start because we're gonna stitch up the sides. So I want it to stay like this along the side. So I'm gonna clip up the side and then I'm gonna clip up at the top. And I'll do the same thing on the other side because I want it to match up along the sides. And now I'm going to sew up either side and I want to leave the bottom open so that I can um, turn it. So now start at the top. I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to back stitch and continue all the way down. Now I'm going to do on the other side, I'm going to flip it over so that I'm, I'm again stitching from top to bottom. And now I want to trim down so about for about an inch an inch on either side so about down to there I want to trim it back to about a quarter of an inch seam allowance there oh that was close This should help with the corners. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna trim down the whole side to about a quarter of an inch. I just, there's a lot of bulk there and I'd rather it sit nicely because I believe we're putting the straps on top of it. So now I'm gonna undo the bottom Turn it right side out and push out the corners. And then we want to make sure that the side seams are flush. So roll it in your fingers so that the um, lining fabric poke out the corners as far as they'll go and then roll it so that the fabric goes towards the back. And I'm clipping it to keep them folded. I am, with, with the faux leather, it's probably not a good idea to iron it. If you have, um, if you're just using cotton and you want to iron, go iron onto the other side. poked at that corner nicely and now I'm going to finger press this along. You should have a nice, nice edge 
along the top because we because the uh, lining panel is shorter than the um, exterior it should have a nice rolled over amount it'll keep the fabric part from poking out so I'm just going to actually roll it over finger press it and clip it and then I'm going to roll the sides as well And now we're going to top stitch with a half inch seam allowance. So I've got it set on a five stitch length because we're top stitching. A half inch seems to seems a little big, but if you don't, you run the risk of not catching the underside. I already tried that. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to melt the ends. Now we're going to position the um, exterior pocket on one of um, the panels, one of the one of the panels. So pick which one you want to be your front, and then we're going to measure in according to the instructions in the pattern, and line up the edge, the bottom edge along the bottom, and the side edge along at that measurement that it says in the pattern. I'm going to clip it first and I just want to make sure that both sides and they're not the same so I think you want it done evenly unfortunately mine isn't perfectly symmetrical so I'm going to find the center of my center of my bottom my pocket panel and I've already found the center of my bottom panel so if I Snip the center on this. If your pan if your pocket panel matches exactly, then you're golden. Mine doesn't match exactly. Let me actually keep a few clips in here. Actually use the flat ones. So I guess one of the things I did not use interfacing on the pocket piece, it probably would have kept it from getting all stretchy had I done that. So even though I'm using a canvas, uh, I probably should have put interfacing on it so that it wouldn't stretch. So anyways, I found the center. I have the center of my pocket and the center of my panel. I have them matched up. So that should be, the pocket should be centered. Now I just want to, okay. okay. So now we need to stitch. We're going to stitch it on the sides. At first it says go across the bottom an eighth of an inch seam allowance just to tack it, but it's also security to keep, make sure that if the bottom some reason comes detached that you can still, um, that it'll still hold things in the pocket. So, and it's also do an eighth of an inch on, on the sides as well. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to start eighth of an inch and I'm going to go all the way down across and back up and then we'll move on to the next step. Since we want to uh, make sure the pocket stays in place, we'll be adding straps as well, but I want to make sure it's staying in place. So I'm going to do it with a, a three and a half stitch length. So it's my joining stitch. And as I said, half in, or eighth of an inch all the way down the side, across the bottom and up the other side. And I will back stitch at the beginning and the end. Trim my threads. All right, now we're gonna work on the bottom anchors. So I've got my four bottom anchor pieces here, and I'm going to take each of them and mark up 
I'm gonna put a line on it. Yeah, mark a line on the wrong side. So this is the side that has the split. This is where we've joined it. So the good side is solid, the, the wrong side. So the right side is solid, the wrong side has split. And I'm just going to take my, this is a silver marking pen for vinyl, and I'm gonna mark up according to the in, um, instructions, the measurement according to the instructions. And I'm, yeah, all the way for all of them. instructions say to use double-sided tape but having learned from my previous experience I'm not going to put double-sided tape I'm going to use some beacon three in one so I'm going to slip my my rect one of my rectangle rings because I want these at the bottom on I'm going to put a little bit of glue if I can get any out along the that top edge and I'm going to fold it over to meet the line. Stip, stick a couple clips in it to hold it in place. So on the front it's all one piece and on the back it stops so far up from the bottom. This is to keep bulk out of the bottom of the bag. So I'm going to do the same for all of the pieces. let those dry this one should be the first one I did should be pretty close I'm not sure which one that was so I'll just move on to this that's holding so taking this one and I'm gonna mark up so much from the bottom according to the uh, measurements and the instructions and I'm going to mark a dot right in the center and that'll be where we put the rivet We'll put a hole for the rivet and then we will we'll punch through both the strap and the body of the bag and then that's where we'll put the rivet. So I'm just going to stick these back on to hold them in place while it glue continues to dry and do the rest of them. There we go. Now I'm going to take one of my panels, the one with the um, pocket on it, and I'm going to take one of the connectors, one of the anchors, and I'm going to match it up. Just trim off. My bottom of my pocket is a little beyond the bottom of my panel, so I'm just going to trim it off even. And then I'm going to match up the anchor with the bottom of the bag and the edge edge of the pocket. And I'm going to put a clip in it. And um, it suggests if you're if you want to, you can tack it along the bottom at the same like eighth of an inch seam allowance as that. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna place them in place. Then I'll turn around and tack them. So I'll do all four of them. These ones are pretty easy to figure out because they go along the edge of the uh, pocket panel. For now, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to clip them and then I will turn around and stitch those on. So now for the other, okay, for these ones, we have to measure in approximately the same distance. All right, since my pocket wasn't completely symmetrical, like it's same distance in from either side, I've measured either side and made sure that these match up with what it has on the other. Quickly turn around and stitch these on, and then we'll move on to the second part of the strap. Right now I have these all tacked on. The next step we need to do is punch the holes and set the rivets. So I've got, I still have my three millimeter um, 
die in there because uh, for some reason I need the three millimeter on this bag. I'm going to center up the mark that we marked earlier. If you need to um, redo them, if they've wiped off, then go ahead and redo them first. Punch the hole. And I'm gonna put the post through the front, flip it over and snap the cap on the back. And do these for all four. I'm going to switch out my uh, presses. And I'm going to set these rivets. So I'm going to seat the bottom cap in this, the base part, just like I did the other ones, and then press it down. Feel it to see if it's jiggly. It's not, it feels firm. So then I'm going to continue on to the other ones. And now it's time to move on to the bag straps. So those are the, pull everything out. These are the longer ones. So not the handles, just those long, four long pieces. Four, four eight long pieces. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark, even them up, and we're going to mark in from either from either end according to the uh, pattern. And I'm going to draw a line using my um, ruler and pen, my silver marking pen. And now we want to, so I'm going to grab my figure eight rings. We're going to use these ones. And it suggests putting double sided tape on the inside. And we're going to rivet these on as well. So I'm going to do basically the same process as I did for the other parts of the strap. So, so for the bottom anchors, I'm going to put one end through here, through the through the rectangle ring, put some glue on it, and then fold it up to that line. I'm going to clip it in place, clip it in place with my clips, and um, on the other end, I will use these figure eight rings and um, glue them into place as well. We'll be setting these with rivets, and. It, we put three rivets in this, so there'll be one at the top, one at the bottom, and one in the center. And uh, it gets riveted right on to the bag. So you can, uh, to keep your strap secure, they suggest double uh, sided tape. I'm just gonna run a bead of glue, as long as I have enough. A bead of glue down the center, just leave it upside down for now. I'm going to add the top, I'm going to add the uh, figure eight rings to the top of each of these, and then we'll add them on, and then we will draw our, our marks. So, here we go. Now I want to, now that I've got these in place and clipped, I'm going to work on the bottom ones. So I'm going to slip the strap into the rectangle ring, grab some glue or double-sided tape if that's what you want to use, and then fold this back to meet up with the line. I'm going to put a clip in it to hold it and let it dry and I will do the same for all of the straps. Yeah. 
So when I put my strap in, I don't remember if I said this for the first one. I want it so that the wrong side is up. So we, when we mark on it, we mark on the wrong side. And then when we fold it over, we're folding wrong side to wrong side. So I slip it in. So I have the wrong side facing up. I'll slip it in the ring. Then I'll put some glue on it. And then I fold it back. So it's all on the wrong side and then clip. And there we go. We're gonna let those sit for a minute to dry and then we will come back and mark the rivet points. All right, so I've already gone and done one side. I wanted to make sure that I was doing it right and everything looks right. So being that we measured here, putting the straps on, I measured all the way up when I was putting the straps on. So I'm going to do the same thing down here so I get it in approximately the, the correct. I want them straight. So I'm going to take these off and I'm going to look at what I measured it at. I'm going to flip the handle down and I'm going to apply glue part way up where we fold it over all the way up the center. You can use double sided tape if you want. I'm using glue. And now we want to put it back, put it down approximately the same distance away from the other one. And I'm holding this end up still because I'm going to measure up here too. Okay. All the way up. There we go. Should be in line. And now we want to mark, make marks in three spots. We're going to mark just up from this ring, just down from this ring, and one approximately in the center between the two other rivets. These are for the rivets so we can rivet it onto the body. So using the um, measurements in the pattern, I'm just going to mark these for these rivets, trying to make sure I got it centered. I'm going to take another ruler and figure out approximately where those are, find the center and mark it. I'm going to grab my rivet punch and without moving this, I'm going to rivet or put the holes in for the rivets. So I am going to do one end And the other end, I am going to pop some medium size rivets in. Stick the post. I like putting the post in from the front. It's completely up to you. Pop it on the back. And the same for the bottom. There we go. So those shouldn't move now. And now we want to put a hole in for the other rivet the third rivet. So we may have to roll things up a bit to get it under. And pop that rivet in. Then we'll take it to the other press or switch out your dies if you need to, hammer it in if that's what you're doing. Um, and now we're going to set the rivets. So seat it in that bottom, press down. I'm going to do the top and the bottom first and then the center. Seat it in. There we go. Great. So we've done one side. It's exactly the same process. I'll go ahead and do the, this side. You just, instead of measuring along the edge, I'm going to try and keep it somewhat in line with the pocket. 
as long as it doesn't end up being too far off at the top. And I will put glue on it just the same as I did on this one. Now it's time to start assembling the exterior of the bag. So we're gonna take the two exterior pieces and I'm going to put them right sides together and join right at the end of this tab and put some clips in it. And do the other side. And now we're gonna stitch up the, the sides with the um, required seam allowance. And then we'll press them open. So, so I have my machine on a three and a half stitch length. And I'll stitch across both sides, back stitching at the beginning and the end of the seams. Needle down. And now we want to press these seams open and I'm going to put some clips in either side. This part's not in the pattern. It's just something I'm choosing to do. I'm going to actually um, top stitch the side seams. I can't see any reason why I shouldn't do this. So I'm going to give it a try. And I, so I'm going to top stitch the side seams with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Both sides of the seam on both sides of the bag. So increase it to a five stitch length. This should just help keep it open. Next, we want to, on the sides, I'm just gonna slip this under. On the sides of the bag, right here, we are going to take our D-ring connectors for the cross body strap, um, making sure that the split is in the center. We'll put the strap connector in the D-ring. And I'm, it says to use double-sided tape, but I'm just going to use um, some glue just in case. So we'll do both, get both of them ready. And I'm gonna use my Beacon 3-in-1. I have Fabri-Tac as well. They, to me, both work about the same. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the end to hold this together and I'll do the same on the other one. <coughs> and clip it for a minute or two to make sure that it holds. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna move one off to the side and now we want to put these D-ring connectors right centered along the seam we just sewed, making sure that the D-ring part is facing up and up is towards the shorter side. And I'm just going to clip it at the bottom. We're gonna, you can baste these on, I'm gonna baste them on. If you want, you can baste them on, I'm going to do it. So I'll put one here and I'll, Base this on and then I'll do the other one. And I'm basting it on with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm leaving it at the five stitch length because I am just basting it. But I'm gonna go back and forth a few times over this.
I want to make sure that the connectors, because this, when the crossbody's on, this connector will take a lot of the weight of the bag. So I'm going to twist this around and do the same on the other side. So take the other D-ring that we put together and I'm going to center it on the seam that we just sewed and clip it into place. Actually, just clip it in one spot so that I can get it under my needle. There we go, the D-rings D are installed for the crossbody strap. We're gonna move on to the next, next section. All right, so we are now at the, uh, probably the hardest part of the pattern. We're putting the sides on. So this is the side, at, side piece. I've already gone ahead and attached one. As you can see, I have lots of little threads hanging because it took several attempts. This is not an easy process. I would say that if you have um, have a machine with a free arm or a cylinder arm, it might be a good time to use it. Um, I ended up using it for part of this. I'm going to go ahead and try and apply the other one as if this was a flatbed machine, but unfortunately Flatbed, flatbed machines have a much larger bed. So keeping a bag on top of it would be a lot easier. This bag is heavy enough, it wants to fall off the edge. So I will do my best to try and show it as I would do it on a flatbed machine. But being that my table is so short and if it falls off, I may end up just taking the table off and finishing it with the um, cylinder arm. So. First thing we needed to do is mark, according to the pattern, in from these corner, this is the top, I've marked my top with the T. So from the corner in, according to the pattern, and we are going to sew between that part, attach that part first. I'm gonna find the center, where are my snips? Find the center of the piece, and we line up the center with the center of the D-ring going to put it on so the top it's looking upside down right now but we line up the top all the way along and we will be sewing between those two marks going to straddle my table because I need to. I, if I had a flat bed, I would just prop it all up. But as I mentioned, it's not quite the same. And I'm going to sew this at the designated, with the designated stitch, um, seam allowance. Back stitching at the beginning and the end. I am also going to use some fabric I have that I came with the machine as a hump jumper because once we get to this um, crossbody strap connector anchor, it's going to get thick. Right about there. All right, I'm going to pull it out, trim the threads. And now the pattern suggests, and I, even though I like avoiding using double-sided tape when I can. The, it, the pattern heavily suggests that we use double-sided tape and we're going to put them along both sides of this. And I've got a very, very narrow uh, double-sided tape so it should not be in my seam allowance. So I'm just going to apply this to both sides. Trying to match the curve. Now one side at a time, I am going to remove the tape and 
put it right out inside out because we'll be sewing it that way. And now I'm going to peel the tape from one side and stick it along. Starting at the bottom. Trying to match the curve. Now I'm going to put some clips all the way along to try and hold this into place. And I found with the other side that I needed some extra overhanging on this corner. I don't know if that's meant to be. I think it is according to the pattern. I think I see some sticking out on one of the pictures. Um, so anyways, so I'm going to start this is the corner that um, I had the problem with getting into, these corners right here. So rounding them out a bit, and of course my faux leather is stretching. So you can see it's stretching right in there because I clipped the corners when I was cutting the pattern out. I got them a little tight. All right, so I'm just going to keep playing with it and see if I can get it all um, put together without any puckers in it. And the first thing I'm going to do is go along and stitch with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So our final is bigger than a quarter of an inch, but I'm going to start with a quarter of an inch because I know that'll avoid my tape, but it's not going into the full distance. Um, it just will help get rid of these um, clips so that I'll be able to move, go in to do the, the closer or the wider seam allowance. Um, on my second pass. So yeah, I'm just going to work at this. I'll go and do the other side now, attach the other side so it's all one, and then I will go around with the quarter inch seam allowance first. All right, now let's see what it did on the other side. If there's any spots. Oh, that went together a lot better than the other side. So poking those pieces out helped. So now I'm gonna go around at the full um, seam allowance and uh, stitch this again. Hopefully I don't catch any, um, hopefully I don't catch any extra fabric like I did before and cause puckers. Just going to trim these up a bit so I can see where the edge is of the uh, of the center piece, the side there, sorry, the side piece. Again, fingers crossed that it works this time. So as I mentioned, if I had a flatbed machine, this probably would go a little bit smoother. The bag is getting too heavy and it's pulling it off. 
and I'm not able to make it around this corner. So I have taken my bed, my table off my machine, and I'm going to be using it as a cylinder arm for this last little corner. Um, if I had the machine, had the flatbed, I would just keep rolling it like I was. I've managed to make it around this corner okay. It's just trying to get around this corner. It wasn't going to work. It was get too heavy and it was pulling it off. So I'll just finish it off this way. And then we can move on to the next step. It's not perfect, but it's done. And less passes than the other side. I'm just gonna flip it right side out for a minute. So I'm gonna see. So it needs this need this is the other side that I worked on before. It needs to get cleaned up a bit. This is the side we just did, so I'll probably be rolling it between my fingers to get the edge crease nice. And this part, when the bag is all put together, this part hangs over anyways, so. So it'll be fine. It's a little puckered, but it'll be fine. Considering that's such a tough go, and my interfacing or my deck of the lights coming off, so I'll play with it a bit, massage it a bit, try and get it worked out. But it looks good. Time to move on to the next, move on to the next step. All right, the next instructions in the bag are to add your uh, bag feet as well as any metal name tags. I don't have a metal name tag. I use cork ones and I've decided to put mine right in the center there. So I've already added that. So put this main part of the bag aside and we're gonna work on the bag feet. I'm changing this up, the adding the bag feet up a little from the pattern. Uh, I prefer marking out my uh, location for my bag feet while it's still flat. They have you sew it all together and then mark the placement of the bag feet. And I suppose if you're lines aren't straight and you take a larger seam allowance this just makes sure that they're centered on the bag after it's been sewn. I'm pretty confident that I will have fairly straight lines. If I don't I'm not overly concerned um, about the placement of the bag feet after the bag has been sewn. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark in so there's five feet. So I'm going to mark in from each of these corners and I'm going to use, because I centered my Decaville light on my pattern piece, I actually measured the appropriate um, distance away on all sides when I put it down, when I fused it down. So I'm going to use the corner of my Decaville light. So I'm going to mark in from this corner the appropriate amount and make a dot. Um, the other thing I want to do is I'm going to fold it my piece in half, make a little snip both lengthwise and widthwise. So I'm going to make it this way as well. So we have all of the matching, all, or we have the center snips on all of the corner, all of the sides. All right, now I'm going to take these center snips and I'm going to draw a line right down the center and figure out what halfway is and there I've already marked my dot for the center now I'm going to do all of the corners want to take my uh, washers for my bag feet. Mine are a little different. These ones I'm putting in have the prongs. They're little tiny ones that have prongs on them. 
And the washers that came with them have all the slits in it like that. There is no center hole. Like some bag feet come with round washers. This came with rectangle washers. So follow your manufacturer's instructions on how to add your purse feet. And sometimes there's rivets. These are not rivets. These are just the prongs. So I, this is the method that I use for prongs. So I'll put something that I can use to cut underneath. I'm gonna start in the center and try and center. I can't see the center dot for the most part. So I'm just going to figure out where to put the feet. And it looks like it's my center to um, slots. So it looks like it's fairly close together and it'll use the center two slots. So now I'm going to take the my uh, Cricut craft knife and I'm going to make little slits in the bag all the way through for both of those slits or for the, both of those marks. I will now find them on the other side of the bag and see if I can get them in. Push the feet foot in, flip it over, and I keep a bunch of little bits of, um, this is Decaville heavy. So I keep little bits of leftover so that I can use them to reinforce the back. So I'm just marking the spots by pressing down. Now I'm gonna take my, my knife and cut the slits. Place it over, find my washer, put it, put it over. Actually, I'm gonna put it the other side down because it's curved a little. So I'm gonna, and then push, I'm pushing the legs of the purse feet out. Flip it over and push it down a bit. Now I usually put, this is just white um, duct tape. I'm just gonna put a little bit of duct tape over over the foot, like that. Flip it over and make sure it's stuck down. There we go. So I'm going to do the same, repeat the same for all four, and then we can move on to attaching this to the bottom of the bag. And there we go, purse feet are all installed. So now it's time to add the base to the exterior of the bag. The first thing we wanna do after we've added the bag feet, I'm gonna stick this aside for a minute. We wanna put that on the bag. So we may have found, you may have found the center before when we were adding the pocket or whatever on. Now that we've sewn on this side panel, we want to find the center of the main panels again. So what I'm doing is I'm matching up the side, the seams for the side panel, flattening it out and the, and I'm making another snip. I may actually, yeah, I'm gonna make a snip in it. I'm also going to place a mark because I have another little snip right beside it. The old one that I used when I was putting on panels. So now the reason I'm doing this is because if you took a larger seam allowance or smaller seam allowance when you were applying the, pan the side panel, it can change where the center is actually on your main panels. So I have gone and I have marked that. I'll do the same for the other side. So matching up the sides, flattening it across, and that's, I'm just going to draw a line for this one, just to make sure I've got the center marked. I've already gone ahead and done the same thing 
for the side panel. So I have, have snips in those. I'll make a mark with the pen. So all I did with that was the same thing, only side panel seam to side panel seam. So now we've got all four sides. I want to take, I'm gonna start with the front and I wanna take the long side. I'm gonna stick this in to the bag and I wanna take the center marks for the long side. I'm gonna do one side at a time and I'm going to clip it all the way out. Flipping my clips around because I'll be sewing from the inside. And I would normally hold this towards me while I do this, but I wanted you to see. So all the way out and you can see that this overlaps. So what I'm going to actually do, it doesn't suggest this in the pattern, but what I am going to do is um, I'm just going to sew basically from this corner to this corner. So where the seams here and seams here, all the way across. And then I will continue and do that for the second side. I'll do that for the second side and then we'll come back and work on this. So I'm gonna go and stitch it right now on my machine. I'll show you what I've done. We'll set up the second side and on, I'll move the camera over so you can see what I'm doing, but I'll do this one first. All right, so I'm back from stitching this on. And as I mentioned, I was gonna stitch it from one um, stitch line to the other. This one's pretty good. This one I went over just a tad, so I might have to back it up a bit. And I wanna do that so it makes it easier to turn and do the sides. But we'll attach the sides later. So bag is on for now, and I did need to use my hump jumper, or my fabric that I use as a hump jumper to get over the um, anchors. So now I'm going to take the other side, other long side, so we'll do the two long sides first, and I'm going to attach it. I'm going to start clipping at the center and work my way out. I have it all clipped. Now I'm gonna change the camera or angle to the machine and we will sew this up. All right, we're at the machine and now I'm going to start sewing this second long edge. I went ahead and put a mark on the inside, the base piece to show where I approximately wanna start and stop. I have one at the other end as well. And I'll be sewing down this with the, rec the recommended seam allowance, three and a half stitch length. So back stitching at the front and the at the start and the end of the seam hopefully you'll be able to see this if not I may move the camera angle And there we go, we have the second side installed. Now I'm going to pull this up. And one thing, okay, for the side seams, um, to make it so that it works evenly, I went ahead, let's see, take this out. So we pull out this base. I actually cut a slit in up to not right up to where my stitches are, but I cut a good size slit in it. And this will allow the um, base, side of the base to wrap around. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So pretty much where that seam is, I'm going to snip down, but not through my stitches. And this just allows the side part, side part of the base to lie a little more flat. You can wrap it around but we will only be sewing from one, from the seam line to the other seam line. So 
just like this just allows it to wrap around a bit into the corner and if it sticks out a little bit I'm not too worried about it I don't want a hole so I'm going to try and stitch as close to the um, seam as possible and I might actually do it this way now that I've placed all my clips going the other way give it a try and see if this works from this side so it might be tricky to get into here from the other side so I'm going to smush the bag down and get it on the presser foot, heavy bag. All right, just so I can keep this out of the way while I'm sewing, I have put in a staple and hopefully that works. I'm gonna try and get in as close as I can to here to start. So I have to squish it down, get it under the presser foot. Needle down, fingers crossed. Hold my threads, tails. Just going to pop this edge out and see what it looks like. Looks pretty good, a little over there. Oh, maybe I just need to push it out a little more. Yeah, that's not bad. So go ahead and do the other side. May end up trimming off some of this seam allowance. So again, I'm going to trim in, just snip in here. Let's see, that's where the seam is. Yeah, I kind of went over, so I'm going to back this up a bit. So that it's not over the seam. Oh, that's pretty good. All right, so I'm going to snip in where the seam is. Don't want to go too far. I think I might have on that one. And then we take the centers and match them up. Going to to keep this off to the side. I'm going to put a staple in again. See if this helps. Go back and remove them after. So I want to keep. I'm moving the uh, seam from the side panel out of the way as well, and I'm putting the staple on the outside, not where I'm stitching. And this time I'm going to see if. I'm not sure this is going to work either. I think I'll just do it from the outside like I did before. So I'll flip my clips and go ahead and stitch it. And then we'll turn the bag right side out and see how it looks. base and if everything looks okay that one feels like it might have a pucker if everything looks okay I'm going to trim down the seam allowances and then we can set this aside
Just a little one. I'm not worried about it. Not enough to go back and take it out. It might smooth out. It might not, but it might. All right. Here we go. We've added the base of the bag. Good size bag. Hardly get it all in the camera. Um, anyways, yes, I'm going to go in now and just trim back the seam allowance for the base. And then we, I'll put this aside. I'll do that off camera. Put this aside and we'll move on to the next section. After I trimmed off the seam allowance, um, some of the, for the handles, for the anchors, I cut off some of the anchors. And when I looked at it closer, it looked like I had cut off my basting stitches, which is an extra reinforcement for the anchors. So I'm just, I've gone through these and I've added another set of stitches and actually zigzagged it down. And so I'm just going to do the same for these two and then I'm going to put it aside. I just wanted to pop back on to say that it'd be, it should be fine with the rivets, but if the rivets pop, yeah, there's nothing else holding it in place. So um, adding extra reinforcement is not a bad idea. All right, now we're moving on to the exterior zipper. So I have my zipper, the full length, and at one end, I've marked according to the instructions, we're gonna do a 90 degree bend in this corner. So I've marked down what it said. I'm gonna split my um, tape. I'm going to, I've marked the line, pinch on the line, which will send the teeth sideways out to the side and uh, form the 90 degree. And so on this bend, on this fold, where the fold line, want it up so that it's at the bottom of the, of the coils, the teeth of the coils. So I'm gonna take a pin and I'm gonna put a pin in it and do the same thing for the other side. So again, pinch on that line, which sends the teeth out to the outside of the zipper we want that line parallel to the bottom of the coils of the zipper. And again, put a pin in it. So now I'm going to take the zipper and I'm going to baste it. So I'm going to um, start down here, approximately where this piece joins. So there's the fold. I'm going to start approximately here with my needle down as far close as I can to the edge without going off. Hand crank it a bit and then I'll back and forth a few times. What I want to do is stitch this angle in. So yeah, and I'll do that for both sides. So starting off or starting at the bottom where this veers off, coming up to the top, back stitch and then pull it out. Put it down and I've still got it on a three and a half stitch length. Okay, so hand crank to make sure that you get it in a few times. And then when you get close to the pin, I take the pin out. I actually use my tweezers to help push under. It's my presser, my presser foot doesn't really like walking up on top of zipper teeth and I will push it to go under and then backstitch. Okay. Pull it out, trim the threads off. And I take my lighter and I melt my threads. Fine if you have poly, bonded poly, bonded nylon, or any kind of polyester nylon thread. I wouldn't try that with cotton as it will catch on fire. So this is what it should look like. It's tacked into place. You've got your pretty close to a 90 degree angle. I'll do the same for the other one and then we can move on to the next step. So now we're going to take our exterior zipper and add it to the exterior of the bag. 
So there are measurements. I'm just going to split this because we'll be putting them on separately. So there are measurements in the pattern for how far you want to start away from the way from the start of the seam, uh, the one end at the start of the bag, front of the bag, and where you want to end it. So make those marks. I've made the marks on mine, on my piece. And I want, this is the front of my bag, and I usually want the front closing to the right. So I'm going to take the piece that when I have it face down, closes to the right. So this would be the closing end, and this would be the you open it to this end and you close it to this. So the piece that when I'm, so when it's done, it's right side up, it'll be like that. I want to take that and fold it, fold it down and put the edge of the teeth right inside that first mark and start, oops, start clipping. So I'm going to clip it all the way along and then I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. So when I sew, I'll sew from there and stop at this mark here. So I can put clips beyond it, but I don't want to. First, we're going to baste it on. And then I, I, once we add the lining, we'll sew it. So for now, we're just going to baste it on and I don't want to baste past that point. So I'm just clipping. And I'll take the other piece and put it on the other side. Now remember when you're doing the other side that the, so on my first, on my front of my bag, my left side was um, the start of the bag. That's where I marked the one me first measurement in. And then from the right was the second measurement because the bag needs to have the zipper finishing on this side, we have to mark the first measurement from the right this time instead, and then the last measurement from the left, so that the zipper will end up closing on the same side and be the correct distance away. So I'm going to take this, so the zipper will finish like that. I'll flip it over and line it up with that, with the mark I made. So make sure that you have the right marks on the right ends. They should, when you mark them on your bag, they should be opposite. All right, now I am going to take this on the machine and I am going to baste it. Actually, I'm gonna transfer that mark to my tape. So I'm gonna just use some air erasing pen and I'm going to mark the end mark on the tape so I know where I'm stopping. And do the same for the other side. You can guess, but it's, it's better to be sure. Then it looks neater and tidier. Okay, so now I'm gonna put it in and I'm gonna baste it on. I'll put it at my five stitch length, eighth of an inch seam allowance and try and tuck the other side away. If it makes it easier for you, just do one side at a time. And it probably should have done it one side at a time. But I didn't, chose to do it this way. I'm going to start in from the teeth a bit and then back up, back stitch, and then carry on the length. Do not stretch your zipper or you'll end up with wonky zippers. Stretching it's one of the ways you get a wonky zipper. Sewing it on wonky is another way. Not I, I've also ironed my zippers before I put them in. That way any... Um, lumps and bumps from storing it are gone and we start with the straight zipper. There, I ended right on the line. I'm going to back stitch a couple and pull it out. And I'll do exactly the same thing for the other side. And I'm going to start on the second side. I'll start from this end. So I'll put my needle down right where I'm to end. I have to get a clip out. It's always a good idea to start your machine with the needle down. Um, at least that's what I was taught when I was learning in school. Um, it also keeps it 
uh, helps keep it from sucking in your threads, although industrials, I still need to hold the thread. Um, and it also doesn't, you get it to start exactly where you want it to. The weight of the bag is pulling it out of alignment. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna go off camera and remove some of the last stitches and fix this up and then we'll be back. So I took all of these stitches out and I've decided to re-add the zipper. I also decided to put some stuff under here. So a couple old cookie tins and a couple other tables that I have for this bed or for this machine. And it does, so far it's made quite a bit of difference having it all on one level. So. A flatbed machine in this case would be really nice with a heavy bag. And there we go. Baste it on, nicely basted on, and it's time now to set this aside and move on to the next step. All right, before we get started on the assembling the interior, of the bag. I just wanted to mention that I had a change of mind. I had decided at the beginning that I wasn't going to interface my um, slip pocket piece or the main lining panels, but I changed my mind and I decided to, um, I think it would have worked. It just would have probably been a little baggier. Even take, like, even if we make sure that it's smaller than, than the, um, exterior of the bag it still was loose enough that i think it would um flop down in the bag so i decided to put a woven interface so i'm using um yeah just a woven interfacing on the back of this cotton canvas so i've done both uh, of the lining pieces and i've also done the inside of one of the the slip pockets or i did the slip pocket um i didn't figure the zipper pocket really needed it and i think that's all of the pieces for the lining. Anyways, we are going to um, move on to putting the lining together. Right, the first part of the lining we're going to do is work on the slip pocket. So we have this piece that's, you know, longer this way than it is wide. And we want to take right sides together, flip it up, I'm going to clip along the bottom. So that it stays even. Probably don't need this many clips and you can hold it if you feel you want to. I'm going to press it in half. And then we're going to take it over to the machine and we are going to stitch up either side with the recommended seam allowance. So, so with the slip pocket sewing down according with the uh, recommended seam allowance, sewing down either, just either side, we're going to leave the bottom open because then that's how we'll turn it through. I've got a three and a half stitch length and here we go. Back stitch at the beginning and the end of the seams. Now I'm going to trim the seam allowances down to about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to take a little bit more off at that corner. Same with this side. There we go. And we want to remove the clips and turn this right side out. Poking out my corners. I'm gonna start with my fingers and if I don't get it, then I'll use something else. I used to use a chopstick, but uh, it broke and I haven't replaced it with anything specific. So I just use the um, end of my scissors. These are not like my shears have too big of a point. So I use these and I just gently push in the corner. And it it's worked so far. You don't want to push it. You don't want really, really pointy scissors and you don't want to po poke through because you don't want to poke through your corners. And then I'm going to just roll these seams between my fingers. And actually I'm going to grab the flat ones and 
put some clips in it just to hold it there. Um, I could take it to the iron. Uh, I don't have my iron set up at my sewing station right now. So I'm just going to finger press this. And the other side. You can run your finger along the seam on the inside if that helps. Now we want to decide which side, so for mine, I want to decide which side I prefer to be the outside of the pocket. I don't know that I have a preference. We're going to be adding this to the top of the pocket. So I think I'll just stick with this one. I noticed I have a few fuzzies on my um, strip so I'm just going to take the lighter and with the low the bottom part of the flame I'm just going to go along and melt anything that's fraying. I could have edge coated these but uh, I didn't. Edge coating is fine but it does take a while. A lot of coats in between. You could use glue. I've heard mod, mod podge. Mod podge. I can't remember what it's called. Some other crafty thing people have used. I do have some of that. I just haven't tried it for edge coating. All right, good enough. So now I'm going to fold this in half to try and create the center line. So I'm going to actually draw a line down the center. So I'll get my ruler. Just gonna draw a line down the center and I'm gonna put some glue on and at least glue one side. It just makes it a little easier to keep it in place. I'm gonna use clips as well, but you can use um, double-sided tape if that's what you want. Me and double-sided tape aren't getting along so well these days. None of my machines touch wood have uh, had any problem with the beacon glue. So I'll just use it. So I'm going to take my slip pocket now and I'm going to align the back part just down, not right on the line, just down from the line about, you know, an eighth of an inch or so, so that when we fold this over, there's room for it to fold over. And now I'm just going to stick some clips in it. I can probably take them off the side now. So we want to fold down right about on the line. And that should distribute the um, trim piece evenly over the top. Okay, move these. So now we want to sew it on, make sure it's even. Sew it on with approximately a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So that would be basically top stitching along this edge. So I'm going to change it to a five stitch length, put it under my presser foot, needle down. There we go. I'm just going to trim off the stuff on the edge. So it's even with the edge or fairly even with the edge. That one's good enough. Melt down my threads. Clean up the edges and there we go. There's the slip pocket. Now we need, just need to add it to the lining. Time to add the slip pocket. 
to the lining panel. So for both of the pieces, we want to find the center. So for the, the pocket itself, the center will be this, the dividing stitch line. We want it centered on the panel, but we also want it to, this will be the, the stitch line. You can change and stitch wherever you like. This is the way the pattern's written. So I've marked with air erasing um, pen. I'm going to mark the, all of the way down. All right, so I've marked the center line with the air erasing pen, probably. Oh yeah, there you can see it. So now I want to find the center of my uh, lining piece. So we'll fold it in half. I'm gonna take a little notch out of it. I'm gonna set it sideways because we're going to mark down from the top a certain amount and that's in the pattern. And I want to have the slip pocket centered along that along that distance down all the way across so that's where I want it now it's I have I'm using um, fabric if I were using waterproof canvas I probably wouldn't do this but because I'm using fabric I'm actually going to put pins in just don't want to pin my tablecloth Stick a pin in to hold it into place. And this should hold it while I move over to the sewing machine. And then at the sewing machine, I am going to stitch. Do a top stitch all the way down the side across the bottom and up to the top. I am not going to stitch on the um, trim piece. I'm going to mark some marks. So I'm going to do one here and that's, I'm just eyeballing about a quarter of an inch in from either side and then one in the center. Make sure when you do this, you don't, cause I'm adding rivets. Make sure when you do this, you don't cut your stitches. So, um, yep, I will turn around now and um, stitch these on. I will add the rivets off camera and then we can move on to the next step. As I mentioned before, I um, pinned down my pocket. If I was, and I said I wouldn't do that if I was using waterproof canvas, because then you put a hole in the, the canvas. If I was using waterproof canvas, I would just very gently move this around without things moving, check it again once I get it under my needle to make sure it hasn't moved, and then go ahead and stitch. So we are to stitch around the three sides, the two sides and the bottom. I am going to start just below, I've got it set on a five stitch lengths, just below the trim piece, and do a stitch or two and back stitch because we want it to stay in, but I'm also going to be putting rivets. So I'm going to continue to stitch around the whole thing with an eighth of an inch seam allowance at a top stitch length. So now that I've gone, done one side, I'm going to crawl across the bottom. Where I have the line marked for the center of my pocket, I'm going to go up, turn around, come back down, and then continue on. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to be putting rivets on. So I need to redo that mark because it's smudged. But uh, yeah, I'm going to put one on each side and one in the center. And I will do that off camera because you've seen me put rivets in. And then we can move on to the next step. All right, so I've added the rivets to um, each side in the center. And I've added some Decaville Heavy and some Peltex. I ran out of Decaville Heavy, so I used Peltex. And what I did for the back of these, since I'm dealing with fabric and I don't have any fray check handy, I actually used my um, 
Beacon 3-in-1 to put glue around the um, either the Peltex or the Decaville Heavy. Put it, put a hole in it, put the glue around, stuck it on face down so that the glue gets onto the fabric and then put the cap on the rivet. This should keep it from fraying and this should keep it reinforced and everything is on there nice. So adding the zipper pocket to the one, so we pick a lining panel, um, the opposite one to the one that you've put your slip pocket on will be, we will be putting the zipper pocket. So I selected this panel. We need to fold it in half and don't forget the short, the short side here is actually for the top. So I'm going to fold it at the top, along the top, evenly, and then I am going to mark the center. And then in this case, I'm just going to take a little snip out of it. So I've marked the center of my uh, lining piece, and then I'm going to... So I'm going to mark the center of my, so I have my zipper overlay, so I need to mark the center of my zipper overlay as well. I am not going to snip it. I am just going to use some air racing pen and draw a line. There, I'll do both sides just to be on the safe side. There we go. And now I'm going to put a little bit of my very thin double-sided tape. I would normally use wash away wonder tape, but I don't have any with me at the moment. I'm going to take this and I am going to put a tiny little strip down the center of the long sides out of my seam allowances. Um, so I don't go all the way to the edge. I'm going to do the top and the bottom. And now I'm going to measure down from the top in the center approximately what it says in the pattern. So I want to center the overlay. I guess it would help if I actually put the center on the outside so I could see it. So again, using air erasing pen, I'm going to mark it on the outside so I can actually see it when I flip it over. could use a silver marking pen, doesn't really matter. So I'm marking the center, using the center as the guide down, I'm marking according to the pattern instructions. So yeah, it'll go about there. I'm going to flip over, peel the tape from the back of this side, and then put it down so that the centers match and that it lines up along the bottom edge of my ruler to keep it level. So I'll move this down a bit, make sure that it all stays level with the, with the edge or even parallel to the edge of the pattern piece or of the lining piece. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to take the tape off of this one and trying as much as I can to keep it even distance apart and flat, stick that down. So now that we've stuck that down, we need to go over and we need to um, stitch just around the outside of this um, overlay. For the zipper pocket, now we are going to stitch around the outside, as I mentioned, of the zipper overlay. Um, I'm not sure it matters really where you start. If, if you don't want to see back stitching, make sure you leave your tails long and pull it through and tie it off at the back. I, I don't have a preference really. I think this bag is going to be mine because I had such a difficult time with the sides that I've put holes in it so I, I'm not going to be able to sell this so uh, keeping it myself um, it doesn't really matter to me. So anyways right at this at the last stitch there right at the uh, overlay so and then I'll trim these back a little longer 
And now I'm going to melt the ends. And I find if you melt them and push them down, it makes them kind of hard and crusty and it makes it harder for them to come apart. So there we go. The zipper overlay has been stitched on. Now we need to cut out the center of the overlay. So I'm going to start in the center here. Just make a, make a snip in the center here because we're going to be removing all that fabric in there. I'm going to flip it to the back side and I'm going to start cutting out towards the overlay because we want to take off the stuff behind the overlay. Now I may need to go around the overlay and I should, this is one of the reasons I like to use um, wash away wonder tape. It peels away a little easier because now I'm going to have to just cut along that tape and hope I don't cut the overlay. So we want to cut away the inside of this, all the fabric in here. And there we go. We've cut away the, the inside of this. So looking from this side, you can't even tell. It looks nice and neat and clean. So I'm going to put this aside for a few minutes. And we need to work on the interior part of the pocket. So we've got it. It's kind of like the slip pocket, just longer here than it is wide. And I'm going to take on the right side up, I'm going to put my zipper right side up, my zipper tape right side up along the top. It doesn't really matter for this pocket. I don't think there is a right and a wrong direction to this print. So I'm just going to go with it this way. So on, because it's going to get uh, clipped to either side. So I'm just going to clip it since my zipper tape is longer than the pattern piece. I think I kept my pattern piece a little smaller, but it doesn't matter. It should fit. Yours may be exactly the right width. So we're going to just, actually, yeah, it should be a little bit bigger according to the instructions. So I'm going to sew this on with the recommended seam allowance. So we're not basing this on, we're actually going to be sewing it on. And I'm going to switch, I'm just going to switch my presser foot. All right, I've swapped out my presser foot. I have switched to use, this had, the one I was using the exterior foot had two sides. This side is quite wide compared to this one. So this will allow me to get into work closer to the zipper tape to get closer to the recommended seam allowance. So change it to three and a half stitch length because we are stitching this on. Hold my threads and back stitch at the beginning and the end of the seam. Now we've got this on, and yes, that looks weird, but this is actually correct. So you want to have the, when you flip the zipper to be right side up, you want to see the exterior or the wrong side of the zipper lining piece. Because when you, op when you open the zipper to look in, then you will see, because this piece will come up here, you open it up, you will see the nice print on the inside. So now that we have this folded up, I'm going to move it over so that my edges match and then clip it in place and repeat the same stitching with the same recommended seam allowance all the way along with this piece. So I, now I'm going to put um, some double-sided tape and I'm going to put it on the very edge of the zipper tape because we when we stitch we won't be stitching this far out so I've got again my very thin um, double-sided tape and I'm going to put it just along the edge Okay, 
right, so now that I've added the double-sided tape to my zipper, I am going to put on the um, zipper slider before I forget. So I don't know if this is gonna be easy enough to see. When I, before I split the zipper, I usually look at what coil comes first. So in this case, there's a coil. It's on the left, right, left, right. They go opposite, that's how they, how they work. So I wanna make sure when I, after I split the zipper and I put this zipper head on, slider on, that the, this side starts first, that the left side starts first, and it's only one above. It's not two or three above the right, it's only one above, because I cut it pretty straight. If I do that, we know then that the zipper will go on pretty straight. So I'm gonna break it apart. I'm going to start by putting the zipper slider on the left side, and then I'm gonna pop the right side in, and with this thumb, I am pushing it up until it looks like I've got them somewhat even. You can look in here too, and in this case, I think I got it wrong. So pull it off, try again. Not too much, and that's too much. So this one has one, it's a left, left, right. So home, hopefully third time is the charm. So I'm not gonna pull it all out this time. I'm just gonna pop it up and then I pulled down on the left side one so that it would go first. So I felt it pop down one and that was enough for it to get to be in line. And you can also tell there's no nothing bulging on one side versus the other. So now my zipper is in, I'm going to put it in the center. So I have marked my center of the piece because we need to center it on this. So just to make them a little darker, I'm using air erase, sew line air erase pen put my the the pull of the slider into the center and I have folded this in half to try and well I'll, I'll get it in half of the uh, for the zipper overlay so that's halfway for the zipper overlay so we want the halfway to be right about there all right so about there. Now this zipper overlay is actually cut a little wider than I'm used to. It's uh, got quite the large opening. So we want to make sure, so that's in the center, we want to make sure that we're centered in this zipper box. So I think it's not bad. I'm going to flip up the top, try and hold the bottom down, flip up the top, take my tape off, and then try to position the overlay down so that it's covering up. I would like it to cover up my stitches and then just give it a gentle press down. I want it pretty even. Along the zipper tape, hiding as much as the, the teeth as, or of the stitches as I can below. and then I will move to the other side. So move my, the pull for the slider out of the way, flip this up, take the tape off, and then reposition back down. And we want, again, to try and cover up the stitches and keep it approximately the same distance away from the uh, coils as possible in there. So now I'm going to stitch around, I need to stitch around the zipper box. With doing the, the pocket this way, we need to do it slightly a different way. We can't just stitch around or that will stitch the pocket closed. So the first thing we're gonna do, move that out of the way, I am going to take all of the pocket and flip it up. Put it under my needle and I'm going to stitch along the very bottom of the overlay, making sure that I've got it on a five stitch length. I will just stitch from, I'm just gonna stitch it from a little bit back further, but an eighth of an inch back. 
and all the way to an, about an eighth of an inch past this corner. So it's just a, one straight line. That's about eighth of an inch past and I'm just gonna back up a stitch or two and pull it out. And I'm gonna trim that one off right at the overlay and then I'll trim these ones off at the back. You can pull it to the back and uh, tie it off if you want. I'm just going to um, melt the threads. Lots of threads right here. This is where we ended. So now this is what our panel looks like. So we've got the pockets up. We have stitched across the bottom. Now we can take the pocket, put it down flat, and we can, how am I gonna do this? So I need to now, now that it's down flat, I need to close up the rest of it. So I need to stitch from here all the way across and back down to this corner. So I'm trying to figure out which way is the best to stick it under my presser foot with this smaller um, foot on. So I think I'll go at it this way. I'm putting my needle down right in the spot where I ended before. I'm going to continue on from there. So all the way up. turn the pattern so it's a little awkward with it under the in the throat of the machine but it'll be fine and then I will continue across the top don't have to move the uh, zipper out of the way to get the presser foot around but if stitching past it where it's bows out can leave it um, can actually make it look wonky it's not a huge deal, but and one more. Now I'm gonna turn and come down. Actually, I went out too far. So slip back over and back down in. I shouldn't have pulled my um, zipper slider that far over because now I have a split in my zipper that I didn't have before. So now I'm going to try and get it down in line with the previous line of stitching. If I had backed up enough on the first line of stitching, I could have put it right into the hole, but I didn't. So I'm just going to go forward and then back forward again, just to make sure I lock the stitches in. So snip that thread, go around and look at the back and trim that one. Going to clean up any threads I left on this side. Now we need to close up the pocket, but before I do, I'm just going to flip mine over, make sure it lies flat, and I am going to actually cut along the edge of this pocket. I, I like to turn my bags and then finish off the lining through the pocket and then I stitch up the pocket. So I don't want, I want this pocket to be open at the bottom. So we need to stitch up the sides, but I didn't want to, um, I, I needed to cut it before I stitched up the sides so I could actually get the scissors in. So now I'm actually gonna switch my foot. My foot has been changed. Now I'm going to stitch this pocket closed just along the edge. I'm sort of using the suggested suggested a seam allowance, but it doesn't really matter at this point. So I've stitched it to a three and a half stitch length because it's a joining type stitch. Push my foot up over the, and actually I'm gonna back stitch over that. Don't always do that, but 
and then go down all the way to the bottom. But before I get to the bottom, I am going to fold this up. This just makes it easier when we go to sew up later and stitch all the way over. And trim not trim the threads. Do the other side. Since we're doing this side and starting with the bottom, I'm going to fold up the bottom first, approximately the same amount. Under my needle. Back stitch. And go all the way up. And pull it out. Now we can trim back this, the sides, including the zipper tape. And it says about a quarter of an inch, no more than that. So, so I'm going to just take off both edges and then melt the end of my zipper tape once I've cut it. And last thing for the pocket, I am going to open it up. And where we sewed it, I'm just going to flip it out. So by flipping it over like this, it ends up helping. You can just pull on the corners. You've got a little bit of a seam pressed in here. It just helps neaten up the bottom edge of this pocket. And now we can put this. This is the zipper pocket and the zipper pockets open for later. So I'm going to leave it half open just so that it stays out of the way. We can set this one aside. All right, so now it's time to um, sew up the lining of the bag. So I have the slip pocket side and the zipper pocket side, and I'm going to put them face together, making sure to keep the top at the top, match up these corners, and clip along these short edges of the side. All right, so we're gonna sew up these side seams with the recommended seam allowance. In the pattern, it has you also um, marking in, you know, a couple inches, sewing in and back stitching here, and then finishing off boxing the bottom corner. Um, I prefer to close the bottom through the zipper, so we will be leaving this part, but it, feel free to follow along in the pattern. If you want to finish this off exactly how they're done in the pattern, you would stitch up the side seams, you would put, leave a birthing hole in the bottom here, and you would sew up the sides. Then you would box the corners and stitch them, and then move on to the uh, adding it to the exterior of the bag. So for me, I'm just going to sew up the sides. with the recommended seam allowance back stitching at the beginning and the end of the seam. Now it looks like it looks like they've already taken off um, some off the side seams for the pattern for the lining so that the lining should fit in the bag and we don't need to adjust our seam allowance um, while sewing the lining. Some bags we adjust the seam allowance to make sure that it fits in but these are separate pieces and I believe they've already been adjusted and I'm going to put it on a three and a half stitch length all right there we go um I'm going to Press these seams open a little bit. I was thinking of cutting it off, but it doesn't suggest to, so I'm not going to trim off any excess right now. Um, if we press them open, it should be okay. So I'm going to turn this piece, the lining piece, right side out. And actually, I think I'm going to switch the camera angle 
or the camera position. So, and do this at the table because we'll be trying to clip the exterior, fit this inside the exterior of the bag and clip it all the way around. And I think it'll be a little easier on the table. All right, it's time now to put the finished lining inside the finished exterior of the bag. Hopefully there's enough, hopefully you can see this. So I've got the exterior of the bag inside out and I'm put the uh, lining of the bag right side out. I'm going to slip one of the lining inside the exterior and I wanna make sure, I prefer to have the zipper, uh, the interior zipper, on the, at the back of the bag. So when you're carrying it front way, so usually you carry it with the front out, you have the zipper pocket closest to your body. So I would like to put the zipper pocket at the back of the bag. So the front of my bag has has the um, my label on it. So I'm going to put it in so that the zipper is opposite that. So put it in this way. Tuck it in and then Hopefully the marks are still there. I can see a mark on this side. I'm just gonna make it darker. Hopefully the marks are still there for the center. This doesn't look like. Okay, I need to find the center. So I'm just going to uh, fold it in half. And find the center of the exterior piece because I have the centers of the linings. So I'm just gonna mark the center of the center of the exterior piece. So I have the centers all um, marked. The center seam for the sides are there with the where the D-rings are. So we should be good. So I'm gonna take, start on this, the long side, and I'm going to match up the centers, and I'm going to put a clip in it. Go over to, we wanna make sure that where your zippers are, that it's facing down. So we put originally, the pattern suggests, so after I finish the zipper, the pattern suggests to fold the zipper down on itself and then put a clip in it. So that's, I, I did that. I think I missed recording that part. So anyways, I've got that in there and you can actually, if it's, <clears throat> if it's easier to work around, you could even pin just the zipper down sort of like we do when we do the 90 degree turn. So I'm just gonna put a pin in it to hold, to hold it down. We might make sure that we've tucked our zipper tape into, in between the lining and the exterior. So I'm going to start in the center. I've already started in the center. I'm going to clip all the way out to the side. I'm going to flip it around, pull the lining up, actually do the same thing to the zipper on this side. I'm going to put a pin in it just to make sure it stays folded over. Make sure it's in between the lining and the exterior. Match up the center marks on the other long side. Putting a few extra clips in the sides just helps keep it centered. And now I'm going to move on to the side pieces. So working on the side with the zipper tape, make sure it's down in. Take the center mark, center seam for the lining and match it with the center seam. So push the D-ring, push the D-ring down out of the way and match up the center seam on the sides. I've butterflied the lining seam, so pushed it open, and now I'm going to clip at the center 
and work my way out to the corner. Ouch. Matching up the corners of the lining with the corners of the exterior. Making sure zipper tape is out of the way. And then do the other side of this and then flip and do the exact same for the other side of the bag. Again, on the other side of the bag, make sure you've pushed the D-ring. Oh, the other thing I did on the D-rings, I don't know if I mentioned it or not. These were moving around a lot, so I put a rivet right in um, just under under the connector so that, or under the D-ring so that it doesn't twist and turn around. So other side, push it down out of the way, matching up the side seams for the lining with the side seams of the exterior. Flip. And there we go, it's all clipped all the way around. So now I am going to switch the camera angle again around to the machine and we will um, join these two together. Okay back at the machine as I mentioned this is all clipped into place. I am going to start along one long side. I'm going to stitch from the lining side. So a couple things you want to keep out of the way are the zipper tape and the handle connectors. So I'm going to stitch it around the, all around the top using the um, suggested seam allowance. I'm going to start probably just in right in here. On um, I'm starting on the inside of the back. And I'm hold, I've got it set at a three and a half stitch length. Hopefully you can see this. And I'm just going to go all the way around the bag at this seam allowance on uh, back stitch at the beginning and the ending of the seam. go around and look and make sure I caught everything. This corner is a little tight so I may go back in flipping it this side up and see if I can square out that corner a little more. That one's okay. That one's okay. That one's okay. So I'm just going to work on the one corner and see if I can get it a little bit nicer. Now that I've got it stitched down it shouldn't move on me. There we go. Alright, so now we want to take off some of this excess on the corner and also we want to snip in to the side seam. So I'm going to snip in a little bit according to the amount given in the pattern. So I'm just going to snip into these corners. Okay. 
Alright, and then I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm going to snip off some of these on the corners just to make it turn a little easier, less bulk. Hmm, I think I need to stitch this one too. It moved over a little bit too much. Very close to the edge. And trim off this corner a bit. Okay, got all the corners. Now let's turn the bag right side out. So we've left a huge opening in the bag because we left the whole bottom open. Uh, in this situation I did, um, if you followed the instructions and you'll have a smaller opening to pull it through. So I'm pulling it through the bag, the bottom of the bag. And I'm gonna check all my seams again, make sure that I didn't stitch anything I wasn't supposed to and poke out my corners nicely. That's where I grab my scissors, stick it in the corner and just give it a gentle nudge to push it out. There we go. I'm gonna switch to the table view so it's a little easier to see. All right, let's continue to turn this bag right side out. A little difficult to do it the other way. So I've got this corner needs to be pushed out a little bit more. Grab my scissors. And while we're doing this we want to roll the um, seam. Let's pull the zipper out from the seam. Just a gentle tug on it and then push the lining in and push the uh, exterior away from the zipper coils. Roll the seams to where the zipper isn't. Make sure that you roll them so that they're pretty even. I'm going to start clipping all the way around because we're going to top stitch the bag after this. You need to stick your hand inside and run your fingers or um, the tip of it, like the end of a pen or something along the seam to help push it out. You can go ahead and do that. This seems to be coming out pretty well. It also helps to push the lining down into the bag. everything pulled the lining down further. We've got everything pulled out. Now we're going to top stitch around the zipper of the bag. Around the outside, sorry, the top exterior of the bag. Not just the zipper, we're going to do the ends as well. So I'm going to start and see if I can do this. I may end up turning it yeah, I want to stitch from the outside, so I'm going to turn the bag inside out because I'm going to put it down. Just a second, let me get this turned right side out. So I prefer, so I prefer my um, top thread from my machine the bottom. I, I think I still have a few tension issues. So I want to top stitch on the outside of the bag and I want it to use, I want my top needle, like my needle thread here, not the bobbin thread. So I'm going to start at the butt end, which is the end for me that has the tails long. I'm going to put it on my machine, on my bed like this, keeping the D-ring out of the way. And I am going to probably start in where the seam is and then just top stitch all the way around the bag. 
gradually, you know, pulling out what I need to. I think I'm going to do, I'm going to do uh, a quarter inch seam allowance. I think the eighth of an inch might be too tricky to keep consistent on such a big bag for my machine. So, and actually the, um, that's what it suggests in the pattern. So I'm going to start on the back, the butt end. So the end with the, um, the tails long for the zipper. I'm going to start on that, go all the way around and stop there. I'm not going to back stitch. I'm going to leave my tails long so that I can pull it through and tie it off and then hide it. I'll show you how I hide the threads in the uh, seam. So switching around to the cam or to the table sewing machine view, um, and then we'll continue. I'm going to try keeping it at this angle to see, uh, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So I've got my threads long. I'm moving some clips out of the way. And as I mentioned, I'm going to be putting my needle down in the join. So actually I'm going to put that up. And then, oh yeah, I was doing the quarter inch seam. And now just keep going with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. And on a five stitch length, don't wanna forget that. Take it nice and slow, adjust as you need to. And uh, it's not a race. Make sure when you're top stitching that you keep your, uh, your lining fabric out of the way. You don't want to be stitching that into your top seam. So since my um, long threads are getting in the way, I am actually going to pull. So I pulled on the bottom inside, the one on the lining side, till I got a loop and I'm grabbing the loop and bringing it to the top thread to the inside. So now I'm just going to try and keep those out of the way while I finish the rest of this um, top stitching. Make sure you keep your zipper tape out of the way as well. And now as I come back across this last little bit, I will be stopping again where I started in that same spot and I will pull out the threads long. I'm not quite there, so I'm going to try and see if I can land right in the middle. There, I'm in the middle. Needle up, pull out long, trim them off, and just like we did on the other side, so let me get this in the camera. Just like we did on the other side, we're going to pull that thread. See the loop came out there. I'm going to grab my, you can use a pin, a needle, whatever I use, tweezers. And now I've got them both to the back side. I'm going to tie them off. I usually do about three of these. It's the thicker thread. It tends to, you can see the knot, but whatever. And now I'm going to grab, a, got a really long needle here. I don't need that much 
trim them off even. Try and feed all four threads through the eye of this needle, if I can. Keep pulling one. Okay, so I got all but one. I can do that one after. So I got these ones. I'm just going to put my needle in just below and just stick it in, put my hand inside, find the needle, and pull it straight down. Came off. So I'll go in and look. There's the threads. Pull them down. Do the same for the last thread. You can do them individually. You can try and do them all at once. Split them in twos. Doesn't really matter. As it's just the whole point of getting them inside the bag. And if you leave them long inside the bag, then it's less chance of it coming out. So there, I do have a little bump. I could have put them all through and then tied it inside since I have access, but this works too. So on the outside then, you can't really see this the join. All right, so that's all done. Um, time to move on to the next part. Now it's time to turn the bag right side out. So we've done the top stitching. I'm just gonna put my hand inside the bag, the other one pushing it in to my hand and then pull it through. Now I'm going to push out all the corners again. There we go. Push out all the edges of the uh, sides, the base. So I want to make sure that everything looks okay before we close up the bag because the next thing we're going to do is close up the bag. So we've got the zipper pocket in here. I'm going to reach in and pull out the pocket and now I'm going to reach back in and these the base bottom of the bag that we haven't finished, I'm gonna grab both sides. So there we go, grab both sides and pull them through the zipper pocket. Pull it all out like this. So there's the corners, there's the side seam, get it all flat. Pretty good sized pocket so we can get most of it out. So I'm just going to pull it a little taut. Try. I guess we could have marked the centers on it, but I didn't. So I'm just going to mark. I'm just going to start clipping the edge um, from the sides. So you can put clip in the side too to hold it. So that when you go to straighten that out. It, everything holds nicely. So I'm just going to clip along this long edge. All right, so it's all clipped. So I'm going to turn around now to the machine and sew across the bottom with the recommended seam allowance. Then we'll work on boxing the corners. All right, closing up the um, bottom of the bag lining with the recommended seam allowance. I have my machine set to three and a half stitch length. And I'm going to stitch across this, one side of the, to the other, back stitching at the beginning and the ending of the seam. And I just ran out of bobbin thread, so I'm gonna have to wind another bobbin and be right back. So we're going to nest, or we're going to um, box the corners. So I'm going to put my fingers in the little, the cutout parts, pull them to the side, and then neat the seams 
together. I'm going to nest the seams, meaning I'm putting one of the seam allowances to the right and the other one to the left. And you want them to match up so they so that the edge of one bumps up with the edge of the other on the inside. So I'm going to put a clip in it. I think I'll put it that way. And put a couple more clips in to hold it. Go around to the other side and do exactly the same thing again. So pull the, pulling them apart, put my fingers in the corners there and pull it apart. And since we, for the base, we pushed the, that seam on this side, it went to the right. Now we push it to the left. That keeps it all nice and straight, doesn't get twisted and doesn't create a bump in the bottom of your bag for things to fall over on. So anyways, I'm gonna clip this all the way across. And now I'm going to sew up these seams with the recommended seam allowance. So need to get this under my, under my needle. And I'm going to backstitch at the start and the end of the seam, and hopefully you guys can see this. And I still have it on a three and a half stitch length because we are still joining. So backstitch at the beginning and the end. And I probably will backstitch over the seam where the seams join as well for a little bit more reinforcement. Now that we've got those all stitched, I am going to cut back the seam allowance on just the corners that we just boxed. I don't think we need to take it off of this piece because this should lie flat now. So it's just boxed corners. So we've closed the bottom so we can shove it back into the bag. Tuck it back in. Looks pretty good. I've got some threads to clean up. I can do that later. Seems to fit nicely. So now I can take the zipper pocket and where we folded it over, we'll just put our fingers on those two corners and pull and it helps push the um, edge of the fabric and I'm just going to work my way towards the center and put a clip in it. Go back, work my way across. So putting clips along the edge to, to hold it. Same on this side. You can use flat clips if you want, like the hair clips. And you could pin it if you really wanted to. I'm not a fan of pins. I always end up poking myself, so I only use it where I really feel they're necessary. So we're gonna put this under the needle. I'm leaving it at my three and a half stitch length. And um, I'm going to do an eighth of an inch. Stitch it closed with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Back stitching at the, front, at the start and the end of the seam. Make a lighter to the end of the threads. Clean them up. Though it's tucked into the bottom of a pocket, I'm not sure anybody's gonna notice, but I know. So anyways, tucking the pocket back in, poke, pushing my fingers right in the very corners to push those down and out. All right, it's in, lining's all in. I'm gonna close up the zipper pocket and before I move it too much more and make a lot more noise, I'm going to turn around and we'll finish the bag off. I think we're finishing it off now uh, at the table. All right, so now that we've got it all stitched together, turned right side out, lining's all finished, we need to put on the zipper slider. So the other rows that I have, and we're gonna put on 
the uh, zipper end. So this little thing that covers the end of the zipper. So I did not take note of where the zipper ended before I separated it. I should have marked it, but I didn't. So I'm just going to start putting it with one, just like I would normally just pick one side put it in first, bring the other one in, just one coil below it, and then pop it on and see how it finishes. So if the, if the zipper here, if the teeth meet up here on this, these corners, then I'd say I've got a pretty good, and it looks like it's pretty good. So I'm just gonna leave it, cause I could muck around with it, but I'm not sure it will get any better than that, so. So we got the zipper on. Now I'm going to put the um, zipper, the zipper end on. All right, so we got the zipper slider on. Now we wanna put the zipper end on. So we want this end of the zipper, the end that doesn't, isn't been turned. And I'm just gonna fold it back on itself. So pretend that the zipper is in three with the coils in the one part, one, two, three. I'm gonna take the first fold it under, second fold it under, and then I'm going to try the zipper end on top of that. So just encasing all of that in the end, just like that. So this won't stay on its own. It does have little screws and I will, but what I'm gonna do before I set the screws completely, I will put glue in the end of this. I'm not gonna do it right now but I'll put glue in the end of this. And then I'm going to take, I have these tiny, tiny, tiny little screws and a little eyeglass screwdriver. And I'm going to screw them in just to, for now, just to hold it on. I will take it off after and set it properly with glue, but I don't wanna do that right now. I have special glue for metal stuff and I don't have it here with me right now. So these aren't gonna go in all the way. So this, this has two, some only have one, some are narrower than others. So anyways, I have also have um, some grippy mat stuff that I'll put on the end to help me hold on to it while I turn it. It's a little cockeyed, but anyways, the that's the idea that you have an end on the zipper. And when you put the screws in, you want the screws to be level with either the back, or in this case, there is a little raised spot for that when the screws go in there's a little spot there it's it's raised um and you want this the screws that you're putting in to be flush with either the raised spots for it or the back of the zipper end all right so next we are going to be installing the tassel strap so we made these right at the beginning they're two half inch uh, wide straps, one will go on, one goes on each end. So with using the, using the measurements in the instructions or in the pattern, I'm going to measure over and just draw a line on the back side, just on the, I don't know if you can see it. There's a line on the back side and I'm going to do it on each end of the two straps. So we want, now that we've got the lines drawn on our, our straps, we want to put them in the D-ring. So I'm gonna grab the D-ring. I'm going in from the front, from the uh, main panel of the bag, not the side, from the main panel. And I'm going to put it through so that the D-ring falls right where I made that line and I'm going to fold it back on itself and put in a clip wrap it around the end of the bag, find the other D-ring, put it in from the outside in. We want to make sure that the D-ring lands at the line that we drew. And then I'm going to put a clip. 
The other way to make sure that you've got enough is to measure the overlap. So yeah, maybe a little bit off, a little bit more. There we go. Measure the overlap. So there's one side. I'm going to do the same for the other. So there's the uh, strap on that end. Okay. Flap out the end. So I've got the strap on that end. Now I'm going to turn it around and do it for this side. So again, I've got the lines marked. I'm going from, so with the right sides facing. So I'm putting the right side of the strap down on top of the right side of my front panel. I'm putting it in the D-ring, making sure that the D-ring lands on that mark and then folding this back on itself and putting a clip in it. So when I wrap it around the other side, I still want right sides down. So I want to come around and in like that. So we want to hide this part of the strap. We want to hide the back part of the strap behind the join. So get the D-ring on the line. And there we go. We can double check by measuring and put a clip in it. So now I'm going to make a mark down from the D-ring on the X outside of the strap and I'm going to put a mark. So it's very hard to show right now. So measure down and then I'm going to put a mark in the center of the snap or strap and that is where I'm going to put. So I've made my mark. I measured over from the D-ring over. Put my mark on it and now I'm going to punch a hole. That's where I'm going to punch a hole for a rivet. So I'll do that off camera. I'm gonna do that for all four off camera and then um, come back and show you what I did. All right, so I've added all of the rivets onto here. I found it was easiest to use my rotary hole punch because it's such a small area. It was hard to get under the big rivet, big, big hole punch, like my rivet press with the punch on it. I set them with the rivet press, but uh, anyways. So now we've got this side's done and this side is done. To push that out. All right, so on the, grab the handles and on the wrong side of the handle. So there's, for me, I do have a right side and a wrong side. I like the stitching on this side better than this side. There is, they tell you how much in the pattern to overlap the strap. So that means how much we're folding it back on itself. So what I did after it's through the ring. So what I did is I doubled that and made a line at that point. And that is going to be the line that I folded over to. So then my end result should be exactly the overlap amount. So I've marked the this handle all done. I'll just go ahead and mark this handle. So I measure from the end up to double the amount that it says in the pattern. You want to make sure that your final overlap amount is what it says in the pattern. So I've just doubled it. So I'm going to make sure that I've got the right side of the strap. So the side I want out when I'm done, I want to place that against my bag. Then I'm going to put it through from the bottom side of the ring, bring it over and fold it back down on itself. Before I do that, I'm going to take one of my caps and I'm going to put it on the end. Now I'm just doing this as a fit test. I will take these off after, put glue in them and put little screws in them because there's little, I don't know if you can see on this side, there's there's little holes for screws. So there's a finished side and then the back side. I'm going to put the back side towards where I have the back side of the strap. So my right side of my strap is down on, on my bag. So I'm going to put the back side of the strap end towards the back side. So this is the front of my strap and I have the front of the strap end there. So I'm going to put it in, fold it over, so that the strap end matches the line that I drew. I'm gonna take a clip and I'm for now just gonna clip them on. 
I have put where the, we joined. So this is the fold over side of the strap. This is the join side of the strap. I have put this towards when it's down like this, it's on the outside. So when you go to carry it, you'll have the nice fold over side uh, showing. So we've got this on the right side of the strap is facing the bag. I'm going to try and keep it straight curve it around and again still having the right side of my strap against the bag hold my ring up and put my put it through my strap through the ring from the bottom up grab another strap end and again this is the wrong side of my strap so i'm going to put the wrong side of my strap end facing me then i'm going to take this and fold it over so the strap end meets the line that I drew. Again, I will secure these strap ends later with glue and the screws. So when you go to hold your bag up, your strap should not be twisted. And this way you get to see the nice edge of the strap when it's up. Okay, I'm gonna flip it around, or the handle when it's up. Oops. Flip it around and do exactly the same for the other side, making sure that I put the join side towards the outside. So right side of the, of the strap against the bag, through the hand, connector from the bottom, strap end, or yeah, strap end across the bottom of the strap with the wrong side facing me. Fold it over to the line I drew and clip. Keep it straight. Now curve it, making sure that the right side is still against the bag. Lift up the, the um, hardware, put it in from underneath, put your strap end on and fold down to the line. and clip. And there we go. We've got handles temporarily on the bag. All right, so I went ahead and I've added rivets to one of my handles. And I think you might need to, depending on how deep your strap end is or what your strap end looks like, you may need to overlap by a little more than what it suggests in the pattern. And if you look at the one picture in the pattern, the strap end on the bag comes down further than the the suggested overlap. So I think it really depends on your um, your strap ends. And uh, yeah, because I found that the rivet was way too close to the strap end on this one. So I've adjusted it a bit for this strap and I will adjust it for the rest of them. But really you just mark from this end down and then down again for your two rivets because you're going to double rivet and i've already you might want to actually screw in your your uh, strap end before you punch the holes for the rivets just to make sure that you are getting it far enough away that it doesn't interfere the rivet doesn't interfere with the strap end so I'm going to go ahead off camera and put on the rest of the hardware and then we'll come back and do the cross body strap. All right, the last step to finishing off this bag is making the cross body strap. So it's very similar to the handles, only we're dealing with swivel hooks and an adjuster, but we do have the strap ends as well. So using the back end, back side, so with the back side of the strap facing up, you may not have a difference, I do, I see a difference. Hold it up, hold the swivel hook like this with the, the ring part up and slide it on to your strap. Fold the strap over, I would put the end on first to be safe that make sure you're getting enough room and then measure the fold over to make sure that you've got the right amount of fold over and i have it there so i'm going to put a clip in it 
I'm also going to get some little screws out and I'm going to screw this end on for now just to keep it in place because they can shift around. So I'm just going to make sure it's fairly straight across. Grab my little eyeglass screwdriver and put these in. They can go flush for now. Um, we'll, I'll be taking them off after and uh, putting glue in the end and then glue in and putting the screws back in. So there we go. And just like the handles, we'll be measuring down. Move it over a bit. Measuring down for the two, because we're gonna put double rivets in as, the, as well, in here as well. So I'm putting my two dots where my rivets are gonna go. Put the clip back on so it holds it in place and even. I'm going to grab my rotary punch and I'm going to match up that one hole, trying to keep everything even side to side and fairly straight top to bottom. So if, if you have it twisted, you're gonna end up with your rivets not going straight through and your strap won't sit straight. So I'm going to put the, I have double cap rivets as I mentioned earlier, and I'm going to put one through one side. Oh, it didn't go all the way through. Go from this side. Okay, put the I put the post in from the right side. Doesn't matter. I don't think. Just the way I like it. Cap on, and do the second one, trying to keep them in line. Put the post. Oh. Some are shinier than others, so I want to try and keep the same ones together. My matte black has some shiny ones in it. So anyways, yeah, that's a little, not quite perfectly lined up. Now I'm going to turn over to my press over here and I'm going to just press them down. There we go. So. Now I'm going to need to add the wide mouth adjuster. So with the wrong side facing up, I believe, I'm going to go up and down the adjuster. So wrong side of the, of the strap. This is the wrong side of the strap because I got that up. It went in one side of the adjuster, out the other one. So this is now the top because it's coming back on itself. So I put the swivel hook on at the top, let it fall down. And now I'm going to push the stuff away from the center bar of the slider, bring this piece around, come out, come in the long side. So on the same side, as my hook going in that side and coming back out on the other side of the center bar. So the center bar is sitting in the in the center there. All right, put it back down. Make sure I overlap the right amount. So that's way too much right now. I'm going to put the end on as well just again to make sure I've got the right amount. Overlap. This is a little more fiddly. I think I would have put the one on the slider first. I would have put it around the slider first and done this one at the end. But this is the way the pattern's written. So yeah, we don't overlap as much, looks like. <clears throat> so I'm going to put a mark, actually I'm going to punch a hole. I want to put a rivet in there, only through the two parts of the strap. We don't want to put a hole in anything else. And I'm going to eyeball this because I don't want my strap ends falling off. 
so I don't want to lose too much of your grip. I'm going to try and center it. Put a hole in it. Feed my rivet in. And put the cap on the other side. And now I'm going to turn and I'm going to press this. So we only have one in by the center um, slider. this strap end on and we want to make sure that the back of the strap end faces towards the other piece that we just riveted it through. So when we go to pull that out, so we've got a swivel there and a swivel on either end with the strap slider. This isn't a wide mouth one, it was the only one I could get um, on short notice. So there we have a crossbody strap. I am going to get put my screws in it in the end to keep it on for now. I will fix this later. One more. All right, and now we can grab our bag and on each end of the bag with the D-rings, I'm going to hook a swivel hook. So there's one. And there's the other one. And there we go. Our finished Windsor bag.